Hola, hola. This is your boy Trent. I'm going to talk about drunk people. I can't stand them, and I, I do my best to avoid them. Guy or girl, I do my best to avoid them at all costs. I just don't like dealing with them. They're, they're too much of a headache, and they're too much of a problem, and I don't feel like taking responsibility for them at all, honestly. Like, it's one thing if it's a relative or, you know, a best friend or something like that, but if it's a complete stranger, I ain't got time to take responsibility for a complete stranger, so I refuse to ride intoxicated people home. Like, I don't care if I'm leaving the club and, like, your ride fell through or whatever the heck happened where something happened. I, I, I'm, no, I can't. I won't. I refuse to. No. There's, there's not a soft story in the world that you could tell me for me to help you. Because I look at it like this. The thing is, uh, you're, if you're, nine times out of ten, if you're out drinking, you're probably a grown adult. So you should be able to manage and comprehend and like be able to think out and think out your scenario on how you're getting home basically there should be no way in heck that you should not be getting home let it be a cab or uber or you know whatever lift whatever the heck you take or best friend or you know backup plan or you know if you're a girl you're sad piece <laughs> or if you're a guy that's putting it down in the bedroom you're 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 you're, you're rich sad chick i mean i mean your well-to-do sad chick, basically. I mean, there should be no reason why you should be out there in the middle of nowhere, like, by yourself. And, like, I don't really like, and the, and the, and the one group of people I really don't like taking home that's drunk all the time is drunk women. I don't, no, I just don't. They're annoying. They're annoying as heck. I don't like, especially if I don't know you. If it, like, it'd be different if you were, like, a family member or a best friend. Okay, I could take responsibility for you. But if I don't know you from a can of paint, I can't take responsibility for you. And if something happens to you, I'm definitely not taking responsibility for you. Even if I don't take you home, I'm not going to feel guilty about not taking you home if something happens to you. Because I look at it like this. You're a grown adult. You, choose, you chose to do what you chose to do. Your actions got you into your mess. I don't feel guilty about not helping you. Because as an adult, I'm... Like, as an adult, I'm not perfect, and I may make stupid decisions, but I have the gift, the foresight to actually think things through or come up with alternative plans or backup plans or contingency plans for, like, stuff like that. If I'm going to be drunk or if I'm supposed to be the designated driver and I get drunk, I have contingency plans to basically help me out, basically. Not that I've ever, like, been plastered or drunk enough to actually have to do that, but, like, I basically have the contingency plans, and I basically have self-control. Like, I can go out and have fun, but I don't need to be plastered to have fun. And that's the thing. Like, it is what it is and stuff like that. So, like, honestly, if, like, basically, I'm not going to rat a person home if they're drunk, basically. And I'm definitely not going to rat a female home that I don't know if she's drunk at all. Because that, that's all types of liability right there. Because, like, first off, it's now 2012. 2000, it's now 2000, what, I'm sorry, 2000. From 2000, what? It's 2018 now, so I'm sorry. So like, I ain't got time for a Me Too move, Me, Me Too movement, just because I was being nice and I didn't do anything wrong to you, and you, you know, and you're upset and you want to take it out on me. I ain't got time for a Me Too moment. First off, that's just it. Like I, 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 I like to prevent myself. Like, and I'm usually pretty a pretty good gift of a good, a pretty good, pretty good at. Uh, Perceiving something by looking at a person and determining if they're going to be a problem or if I'm going to have residual problems from helping a person, basically. It's basically, I basically have a gift to doing that, basically. And I don't want to take responsibility for somebody else, and nor do I want to be, I don't, nor do I want to incur any bull crap from helping out somebody else. Because I've always been the type of person, I will help somebody and I want nothing in return. Because that's the type of person I am. I'm a very humble person and I will help people. But, like, in America, people have been doing some stupid stuff, and it makes me not want to help people anymore, honestly. Like, I don't even want to, like, extend a hand out or give a ride no more because I don't want to be responsible for no crap, and I ain't got time to be responsible for no crap, and I ain't got time to be going to court for some bull crap that I know I didn't do. And that's real stuff. I look at it like this. If a gay guy <laughs> could get accused of like 
a sexual sexual assault on a woman, then anybody, anybody's anybody's liable to be charged or like accused of sexual assault. And it's sad. And the sad part is I actually had a best friend that actually helped somebody once and he's actually gay. He's been gay since I think he told me he's been he knew he was gay since he was in sixth grade or something like that. And he got to, and basically he had uh, he had got arrested from his job and stuff like that, and he got taken to jail and this that and the other. And he had to fight for he had to basically fight for his name and his freedom, basically, be, all because a woman accused him of like a sexual assault or a rape that never even happened. And I believe the guy because he was gay. He's legit gay. Like, there's no way around it unless you're like that stupid drunk, drunk that stupidly drunk, to the point where like you can't differentiate anything or your senses are totally gone, where you can't differentiate that. And it's sad that it had to be that way, that he had to actually go through that. He lost his job, like stuff like that. He lost everything, he lost his way of life. Meanwhile, he's gay. And he was accused of rape or sexual assault basically on a woman that he didn't even do. The sad part is the heifer tripped and fell and he went to go help her up and he walked her to her door and he closed her door behind her and he went back to his car. Now, anything, any injuries that she occurred from like tripping and falling to the ground from being drunk and to the door was like basically her own doing. But basically he didn't, he didn't rape her and I had to be a character witness for him, which was like really, really, which I found very bizarre because he's gay. Like, how does everybody not know he's gay? Like, how does the jury not know he's gay? Like, I mean, it's like, and it's, and it's sad. Now, how did the judge not know he was gay? Like, how did the officer arresting him not know he was gay? Like, but it's like, it's just, it's just, yeah, it's, it's sad. He ruined, his life was ruined all because he was accused of some stuff that he didn't do. And he's gay. And after that incident, I never helped anybody else after that because I ain't got time to be in a situation like that at all. And nor do I want to be put in a situation like that. I, so I just don't help. And if something happens to a person, I don't feel responsible for that person because I'm my own person. You're your own person. I'm not responsible for your stupidity. Nor would I take responsibility or feel guilt for something that happens to you because I didn't help you or didn't want to ride you home. I'm not going to feel guilt for somebody like that, basically. Because I look at it like this. We're not related. I don't know you. You're not my child. You're not a best friend, so I'm not taking responsibility for you because I don't know you. It's that simple. You're a stranger. I don't know you. As far as I'm concerned, stranger danger, like they used to teach people in school. I don't know you. I don't have to take responsibility for you. It's that simple. So I'm, I'm was, if you're drunk and, and you need a ride home, I'm not going to ride you home at all. It's, I'm not going to ride you home at all. But if you're sober and you're stranded and you're sober, I will pay for a cab ride for you. But I'm not going to ride you home. It's that simple. Like, I don't like dealing with drunk people at all. I, I refuse to deal with drunk people. They act stupid and they tend to do stupid things. And I ain't got time for that. I don't have time for that at all. Nor do I have time for, and nor do I have time to be going to court for some bull crap that I know I didn't do. Nor do I have time to be defending myself on some bull crap that I know I didn't do. And it might sound mean, but hey, that's the reality of the day. That's the reality of what it is today, basically. I don't feel responsible for you. So if something happens to you, I'm not responsible. You're an adult. You chose to go to the club. You chose to drink them many drinks. And you chose to put that stuff in your system. You chose not to stop. You chose to continue. And that's what happens. There's consequences for your actions, basically. For every action, there's a reaction. There's repercussions and consequences for your actions, basically. So no, I'm not going to take responsibility for you. It's that simple and try to be more, try to be more um, smart about it and try to be, try to be more responsible with your drinking basically. 
It's that simple. You don't have to be plastered to, to no recognition to have fun. What type of fun is that when you throw up all the money, all the money that you spent on all them drinks? <laughs>